What's going on everybody? Dan Unfiltered, Unfiltered Wrestling. This is the Raw after WrestleMania. Arguably the most important, biggest, most exciting Raw of the year. Until you watched it. Until you watched it. Let's get into the show, God damn it! Let's get into the show. Normally I like to start off with the things that are noteworthy. Yeah. Yeah, I did. I still did. There's nothing noteworthy on the show! Let's get into it anyway. Asuka. This show, it starts off with Asuka versus Liv Morgan. Why? I don't know. I don't know. I get... I don't know! I do not know! There was no reason for this match. It told no story. It set up no actual feud. It is not coming off of a feud. It was a time filler. That is it. That's it. Nothing more. Nothing more. A time filler. Thankfully, Oscar won. Even though I do like Liv Morgan, but her repackaging is a humongous failure. Humongous. Oh, no, it's early, Dan. It's not. No, it's a. F it, it's failed. It has completely come off the rails and is an utter failure. I would like Liv Morgan to get off TV for a while and then be repackaged again back to her Harley Quinn gimmick. That She wasn't doing shit with it. But at least that was a gimmick. What is she now? Is she, They dropped the gay gimmick like that. She had it with Lana for about, what, 10 minutes? Over. Now she's just a woman in latex. She's supposed to be a Catwoman or Black Widow or something. I don't know. I don't know and I don't care. And that's the worst thing you could do in, in wrestling is have someone not care about you. I should either hate you or like you. I don't care. Liv Morgan to the Batmobile. Get out of here. I don't care. Then we had uh, the Street Profits and Bianca Belair versus Angel Garza, Austin Theory, and Zelina Vega. On paper, this is a great idea. A great match. WrestleMania set it up perfectly for us, didn't it? It did. It was nice. Street Profits retained. They retained. And afterwards... Austin Theory, Garza, Zelina were beating down the Prophets. Then, to the rescue, was Bianca Belair. Match set for Raw. Tie it, put a little bow on it, put a little sticker, give me a thumbs up, slap me in the face, I'm good! But no. What'd they do? Ah. <sighs> They did a uh, rematch, tag team title rematch, Street Profits versus Garza and Theory, even though we obviously know who's going to win and retain. And the Profits kind of did. You know, the DQ, Zelina Vega was involved. And then Bianca Belair came out, which I don't get, because then it's like if she's already in the building, obviously, how come she didn't just come out with her husband? Since they've already put the axe together the night before, it doesn't make sense. Please help me make it make sense. But she came out, saved them, and Todd Phillips basically is the authority because he set up the next match right before the commercial break. Said, "We're are we getting Bianca Belair versus Zelina Vega next?" Uh, yeah. I guess we are, clown. Obviously, if you say it, and we did. We got Bianca Belair versus Selena Vega. Uh, 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 I guess, I mean, okay. 
And that also ends in a weird DQ, which in a DQ that doesn't make any goddamn sense if you've been watching wrestling for more than a couple of days. It doesn't make any sense because Zelina Vega is wrestling Bianca Belair. And then I think it's Austin Theory and her husband and Bianca's husband, uh, uh, Montez Ford, then kind of fight each other and it happens to get into the ring and the bell's rung. But yet, the women weren't involved in that. They didn't get affected. No one got hit. Show me distractions we've seen. You could call that a distraction DQ? Wrestling doesn't have distraction DQs. You have to physically touch one of the competitors or a referee. Neither happened. A fight happened outside the ring, spilled into the ring during a match. That happens all the time. What the hell do you think the 24-7 title did for the first six months of its existence? There'd be some random two douchebags in the ring and our truth would be running from 40 men and it would spill into and out of the ring and then someone would just get big booted, one, two, three. No DQ. No, that makes no sense. It, it, just please, let me know in the comment section. Make it make sense if I'm... Maybe I'm tired. I don't know. Let me know if I'm overreacting here, but it doesn't make sense to me. Maybe I'm missing something. Let me know if I am. I'd appreciate it. And then it goes and they... We got that, the six, three on three, six person tag match. Which that was, if that's the goal, that's perfectly fine. But WrestleMania already set that up for you. You didn't need two other pre-existing matches right in front of it to get there. What? God, what a time filler. And I know, WWE's in a tough spot. I got ya. I got ya. And I salute them for trying their best. But I wish their best was better. Because this show, man, this show. After such a good mania. Then we got Aleister Black versus Apollo Crews. Now, no. Everyone just... Apollo Crews, before he signed to WWE, was actually a huge name on the independent circuit. He was. And Yuha Nation, I think, was his name. And, uh... They ruined him completely. He's an absolute jobber. He's below Zack Ryder. But yet, he has a match here. Random match versus Aleister Black. The match was so long. So long. What took Aleister so long to beat him? Kick him in the face. Let's go home. It took forever. And it's not like, oh, wow. Finally, Apollo Crews is looking good. They're finally using him correctly. No! No! He... There was a bunch of rest holds just to burn time and have commercial TV timeouts. This was long. It was boring. It was dull. It was pointless. Aleister Black wins. Cool. Accomplishing nothing at all. Nothing at all. And then we have, uh... I guess... I guess the match of the night? Ricochet and Cedric Alexander versus Oni Lorcan and Danny Birch? Now, on paper, that looks like it'd be a great match. If this was on NXT, ooh. Ooh. Especially in front of a crowd. You could put that on a takeover. Team 1-2 versus Alexander and Ricochet? Sign me up. That's electric. This uh, wasn't. It was okay at best. It was a little fun, cool. The only good, the only thing to come out of it was a uh, ricochet, and yes, ricochet and Alexander won, obviously. But the only thing to come out of it was ricochet and Alexander are an official tag team now. I'm okay with it. I do think ricochet is so damn talented 
that he should be a singles competitor, even if it's a great mid-card singles competitor, I think it should be singles. I think he's kind of too good to be just in a tag team. I would have liked, uh, man, if you just switched a couple things on the show, how about Aleister Black versus Ricochet? Can we do that? If we need to fill time, if we have, they're in the building, can can they do, can they just wrestle? Aleister Black versus Ricochet. I don't give a shit if they're both faces. I don't care. I, that, that's something for me. That I'm fine with that. Make that the main event. I'm cool. I'm good with that. And I don't care who wins. And then Cedric Alexander and Apollo Crews can be a tag team. They scream tag team. They both look like tag team wrestlers. They act like it. They move like it. Put them together. Apollo and Alexander. There you go. AA. Who cares? It works for me. But no, we have Ricochet and Cedric Alexander. Whatever. Who cares? So we had Seth Rollins, the Monday Night Messiah, in a another jobber match. He squashes Denzel Dejournet, Dejournet, whatever. They say he was some NXT developmental talent. And yeah, he looked like it. He got beat up. It was quick. This was just to keep, just to put Seth Rollins on the show. That's it. Nothing came of it. Squash. They're just trying to, uh, I guess, make Seth look good after losing at Mania. That's it. Who cares? Then we got Nia Jax. Yes. Nia Jax making her return. She faces Deanna Perrazzo. Now, if you know anything about Deanna Perrazzo, she's also kind of, kind of a big deal on the independent scene before signing with WWE. And I like her uh, maestro gimmick. It's pretty cool, you know. She just gets squashed by Nia Jax. Which, hey, we're, Nia Jax is the better prospect. I know. I got it. I like Nia Jax, actually. I think she's been criminally underutilized since being the company. There's no reason she isn't like a dominant, young, big show level of force. But, why couldn't you just have Nia Jax be, like, why couldn't Becky Lynch exit her damn monster truck and Nia Jax attack her, make her return that way with an impact? Nia Jax and Becky have history. Nia is what started this Becky Lynch momentum a year and a half ago. Just revisit it. If we got things we got to fill in pay-per-view time, money in the bank, Becky's probably not losing until... Becky's not losing until Ronda Rousey comes back, it looks like. So why not just have Becky face Nia Jax? That'd be cool. That'd be cool. If you want Shayna Baszler involved, make it a triple threat. Shayna, Baszler, Becky, Lynch, Nia Jax at money in the bank. I don't care if there's a crowd there or not. That's kind of money. That's kind of good. That's interesting. That's interesting. Because at the moment, I don't need to see a Becky Lynch rematch against Shayna Baszler. Why does Shayna deserve it? She doesn't. And then we got Umberto Carrillo versus Brendan Vink. Another jobber squash match what is going on in my life right now that i'm wasting three hours watching this shit that is what went through my head this entire time let me know down below in the comment section what went through your head was it the same was it something similar to what the hell am i doing with my life right now is quarantine this bad that we're watching that we're watching three four different squash matches where Half of the competitors in the match, never heard of them. Carrillo wins. His patented moonsault. Cool. Who cares? Who cares? And then the main event, which didn't even actually happen tonight. Apparently this happened 
after Drew McIntyre beat Brock Lesnar, he then faced Big Show at WrestleMania? So technically, that was a WrestleMania match. Technically, Brock Lesnar did not main event this WrestleMania. Big Show did. Think about that. Yeah, no, that happened. That happened. Yeah. Way back in the day, Lex Luger, Yokozuna, they were the main event of WrestleMania. It was like WrestleMania 6 or something like that, or 4. I can't remember. It was something way back. Yoko won by cheating, of course, and then immediately Hogan came out, challenged him. They had a match. Hogan beats Yokozuna and becomes a champion. That is now your main event. Big Show main event at WrestleMania. Not Brock Lesnar. And that's insane that we're saying that right now. There's so many things wrong with this. That's just one. Two. I think it makes Big Show look like garbage. It does. The man's a Hall of Famer. First ballot. He could end a night. Like he a Hall of Fame speech ceremony. He could be the last guy. He's that good. His career was that great. And he can't beat Drew McIntyre after Drew McIntyre took three F5s? 20 minutes later, Big Show, you can't, your choke slam can't finish that guy? Come on. It just looks bad. It looks bad on him. At least he's not a regular member of the roster. Then I'd really be pissed off. But you know what I mean? Damn. Great job making a legend look like a buffoon. I get it. It's trying to make Drew McIntyre look credible very quickly. But damn. Couldn't you just have taped it and said it happened on Raw the next night? Saying it literally happened. And they did multiple times 20 minutes later. Makes Big Show look like an idiot. Makes him look bad. And also kind of makes Brock look bad. Drew McIntyre had so much in the tank that he could still beat another Hall of Famer, a giant, after beating you. Can't call him beating you a fluke. Beat you and Big Show, same night. Look out, Chris Jericho, beating The Rock and Austin, which is more impressive. The Rock and Austin, that's definitely more impressive. But, you get my point. This is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It's It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Uh, But yeah. Here we go. That was it. I'd like to sit here and chat with you fine folks more about some uh, good things that happened here. But they just weren't. This show gets a D minus. Oh, Dan. You didn't say anything good about the show at all. How come it's not an F? Do you even give out Fs? Look, gets a D minus. Why? Because I'm biased. And Big Show is my childhood favorite wrestler. There you go. You made me say it. He is my favorite wrestler as a child. So I will not give him an F. But the show sucked. Nothing happened. And what happened was a waste of everyone's time. And made Brock Big Show look stupid. And also made uh, us fans look stupid to believe Drew McIntyre in those 20 minutes he said he got new plates new plates put on his title belt oh how the hell did you get that done in 20 minutes and installed on your belt so does every challenger everyone who challenges for a world title get belts with little plates ready just in case they win or is this predetermined Huh, Vince? Which is it? Yeah. I bet you don't want to answer that goddamn question. Ugh. Damn, I hate when they try to make, when they make us look stupid. D minus show. For so many reasons. Boring, stupid. And such a letdown after what we just had. 
Highlight of the show, Bianca Belair is now on uh, Raw, officially. She said it. And uh, Cedric Alexander and Ricochet are a tag team. Cool. What a Raw after WrestleMania. If you are new, please subscribe. I'm not always this negative. Usually I try to defend WWE. This one, though, not a lot I could do. Not a lot I could do.